For Wednesday, 5 May 6th, I'm going to be honest, um, let's start out with, I sort of changed my mind a little bit about what we're, what we're doing, hence the reason I'm working a little later there than even usual for me. Um, I decided that we were, I was going to push ahead and, and I was going to look at Russian Revolution a little bit more, in a little bit more depth. And I said, scrap it, we're going to move on because I, because our, you know, with, with the limited amount of time that we have and doing a quarter of, of what we normally do, I need to, I need to move on. So we're going to do some stuff that's going to seem a little odd with the co combination. We're going to start plunging forwarding ahead here, whatever you want to call it, moving forward, I guess would be the best word into some other aspects of post-war world between the wars. Um, activity and and um, events, and we're going to start with Africans and the Mexicans, and we're going to and we're going to come back to Europe next week. So, African nationalism and Mexican Revolution video notes questions. Now, this there's no there's no pair deck for this one. You can simply say hooray or maybe whatever, however you want to do it. But there's some questions and notes to take on this. There may be some some formative questions next week. I'm not sure. So I'm going to be honest with you. These two videos I did last year as a flip um, on the classroom. So the videos will make reference to the notebook that you might you, that you're you know you would be familiar with normally. Obviously, I scrapped the notebook a couple weeks into online learning. So ignore the references to the notebook. The slides are here. Um, complete them in blue, please. Complete them in blue. And there's some questions. And I answer them in within the part one and part two of, of nationalism in Africa. It goes back into some of the, the origins of nationalism and then starts to get into um, nationalism in Africa between the wars. And as, as the colonization that takes place there starts to become more unsettled. Now, Africa doesn't decolonize until the 1960s, but there is some movements toward um, independence and movements away from European control. It's a struggle, but it does happen. The other aspect that I'd like you to take a quick look at that we want to take a quick gander at is the Mexican Revolution and the, the Mexican influence on World War One. This is kind of going back in time. We're going back into the 1910. 19 through 1920 time period talking about uh, presidents like Porfirio Diaz and um, excuse me um, and other Mexican leaders who were influential in 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 the uh, the Grito de Dolores the the Mexican movement for independence and the and the revolution there and they were actually one among the first um, to sign a constitution. So uh, take a look at that. It's some multiple choice, a few open-ended questions. It's a, it's just a, it's a pretty basic high level overview. Um, you know, characters like Pancho Villa and, and others and their, their influence in, in Mexico. Um, it does go back to the, their, their, their attempted influence with Germans and the United States and the role in the Zimmerman telegram as well. Um, it's pretty quick. Um, so there's, I know the, what seems like two separate pieces here that aren't really related to each other and putting them together in the, in the, in, in the structure of this online, um, online learning so that next week we can set ourselves up to really move, um, ahead and, um, and integrate ourselves fully into the world between the wars into Europe and back into, um, and China and Japan as we, as we move along and, and how the Treaty of Versailles that you okay that that leads me into and how the treaty of versailles and let me schedule this bad boy uh how the treaty of versailles ends up setting up world war ii so remember you did um speaking of that um your project boards were one of the one of the aspects was the treaty of versailles that's overdue um, a couple of, i want to make an apology to you i made a lot of reference to scribble tool and it turns out that most of the map was set up so that it was post World War One. You probably don't didn't need the scribble tool if you did it. Great, I'm sorry, um, but I, I some people were pointing that out to me. So if you if you haven't done this yet, it's overdue. Remember that's a, that's a test grade. And then what the, the current this is due um, well tomorrow the the Russian Revolution paradigm. And again, 
going through the videos, answering all the questions for full credit as I, you know, grade some of these pair decks from World War One. The way you get full credit is is a decent, you know, decent score on the on the on the, the questions and not just getting them clicking on random whatever. You, I want you to think about the questions. I mean, if you get one or two wrong, it's on the end of the world. The key is, did you do them? Did you do them to the best of your ability? And did you do all of them to get full credit going all the way to the end of, of the pair deck and paying attention to the, the pair deck? Again, the pair deck being kind of the fastest way I can give you a nice overview without saying here, here's a bunch of guided reading questions, which I, I'm going to assume you'd rather do those than, than the, um, uh, and a bunch of guided reading questions. Okay, so again, African nationalism and the the Mexican Revolution for is is the is the activity for this time due on Sunday, and then we will move next week into uh, more extensively into the world between the wars. One of my favorite units. It is my favorite unit in world history to teach. Um, so sorry in advance. <laughs>